Hello everyone, I am Chase at Rocky Mountain ATVMC and this is our Handlebars 101. All right, in this video today, we are talking all about handlebars. Now, handlebars are probably one of the more common upgrades that riders like to make to their machines. And the good news is that here at Rocky Mountain, we have a very large selection for you to choose from. The difficult part is there's a lot of things you need to consider when you are choosing your next set. You have different sizes, different materials, different bends to consider. And so that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna educate you all about the basics of handlebars to give you the information that you need so that you can buy with confidence. All right, so the first category that we're gonna cover is going to be materials. Now with handlebars, you've got two main materials. You're gonna have steel and you're going to have aluminum. So nowadays, just about all your stock race and off-road bikes are gonna have aluminum handlebars. They're gonna give the most performance. They're stronger, they're lightweight, and they don't bend nearly as easy as steel. And that's what you're gonna see just about all riders putting on their off-road performance machines. Now with steel handlebars, we do have a couple options available, but they are limited. And honestly, the only real benefit to a steel handlebar is gonna be cost. You are gonna notice also with a lot of styles of aluminum handlebars, they are going to have a shot peened or an anodized finish to them. That's gonna help with strength and durability. All right, so the next category we're gonna cover is gonna be sizing. Now, depending on what came stock on your machine, you're gonna have two main sizes. You're gonna have seven eighths of an inch, which is this red pair here. And on my right, you're gonna have one and one eighths of an inch. Now, sometimes these are called oversized bars, fat bars, or even big bars, so just keep that in mind. Now, with the seven eighths handlebar, it's gonna be seven eighths of an inch all the way across. With an oversized bar that's one and one eighths, it will start at one and one eighths in the center, but you will see that as you work your way out to the end, it will actually taper down to a seven eighths. That's gonna make sure that your controls and your grips are gonna fit just fine. Now, a very common upgrade that riders like to make is going from a seven eighths to a one and one eighths. And the reason that riders do that is that the oversized handlebars are gonna be stronger and much more resistant to fatigue. But one thing you need to keep in mind, if you, if you are going to make that upgrade and you currently have a seven eighths handlebar with seven eighths clamps, okay, you are going to need an oversized handlebar clamp to accommodate the one and one eighths inch handlebar. Now lucky for you guys, on our website, we have a lot of different options to choose from for oversized handlebar clamps. But in some situations, there are some machines where the lower handlebar clamps are actually built into the upper triple clamp. Now, if you're in that situation, you can look at our Tusk Universal Big Bar clamps, and those will actually convert your stock clamps into a one and one eighths and allow you to run an oversized handlebar. So the last thing that I wanna cover when it comes to sizing is when you use a parts finder on our homepage, so when you enter the make, the model, and the year of your bike, your ATV, as you scroll down and you get to the handlebars page, it's only going to show the stock size handlebars that came on your machine. So if your bike or your ATV came with a 7 8 inch handlebar, that's what you're going to see. However, we do have some kits available that come with our Tusk Universal Big Bar clamps and our oversized clamps, along with some of our more popular 1 and 1 8 handlebars in different bands. So if you want to get everything you need to upgrade to a 1 and 1 8 handlebar, that's a very easy way to do it. But keep in mind, if you want to see all the oversized handlebars that we do offer, it's very simple to do that. You can just look at our handlebars page. All right, so next up, let's talk about handlebar bends. Now, every manufacturer is gonna offer their handlebars in different bends. Now, this is where it gets a little bit dicey and a little bit difficult of knowing what bend is gonna be best for you. But the bend of your handlebar is gonna have three different measurements. The first one is width. Now, width is pretty straightforward. It's gonna be from bar end to bar end. It's gonna be in a straight line, okay? You're not gonna follow the shape of the handlebar. And usually, you're gonna be right around 800 millimeters or 32 inches. But in many cases, you can alter and narrow down your handlebars if you want to. The second measurement is height. Now the way that they measure height with handlebars is they will measure from the center of your bottom of the bottom of the handlebar. So right here. Now imagine if you were to draw a line from the center straight out and measure up to the middle of the end of the handlebar. That's gonna be your height measurement. So center of the bottom to the center of the top at the very end. And your third measurement is gonna be your sweep or sometimes called pullback. And that measurement is from the center of the bottom of your handlebar and how far it bends back towards the rider. Now you gotta keep in mind that handlebar companies, they'll actually give their bends names for the handlebars. You might see CR Ben or Ricky Carmichael Ben or Wyndham Ben. So it's important though that you don't just pick a handlebar based off your favorite rider. You wanna look at the different bend measurements of that. Now the way you can see those is on the product page. If you go to the sizing chart, it will show all the different bends for that specific handlebar. Or you can use another great tool that we have, which is our handlebars info page. And on there, we share some really good information about handlebars in general. We also list the different brands that we have and the bands that are offered. And also, 
keep in mind that we're always updating that page. So if you see something on there that's missing, well, let us know and we will get it updated. So let's say that you have a handlebar and you really like the shape and you like the bend of it, but you don't know the name of the handlebar and you also don't know what your bend measurements are. Well, there's a simple way that you can find out. Now, it's not going to be perfect, but we'll give you a very good starting point and I'm going to show you how to do that. So what you're going to need to do is take your handlebars out of your handlebar clamps and you're going to need a tape measure. So the first measure we're going to find is going to be your height. Now to find the height, it's very simple. You want to have the handlebars on the table or on any flat surface. You want them as straight up as down as possible. You're going to notice with these chub bars and most other handlebars out there, you're going to have these centering lines on the bottom here. So you want to have that zero as straight up and down as possible. So once you have that done, you're going to measure out here at the end of the handlebar from the table to the bottom of the end. Okay, you're not going to measure to the center, but you're going to go from the table to the bottom of the handlebar. So that's going to be your height measurement. Next, let's find your sweep or your pullback. So for this, it's real simple. You're just going to place the bars facing forward on the table. And again, you're going to come out to the end and you're going to measure from the table to the bottom of the end. Not the middle, but table to the bottom of the end. And that's going to be your sweep or your pullback measurement. And lastly, with width, well, this is pretty straightforward. We've already talked about it. It's just going to be from bar end to bar end. Just remember, it's not going to follow the shape of the bar. It's going to go straight across. So that's really easy. That's how you can find the bend of your handlebars or at least get very, very close. So when you are looking at handlebars, you can say, you know what, that one is very close to what I have now. That's the bend that I'm going to go with. So simple to do. But you guys got to remember that when it comes to handlebar bends, it's all about rider preference. Most riders will find the handlebar bend that they really like and they will stick to that. But if you're not quite sure and you want to experiment maybe with some different handlebars, there are some things that you can consider. For instance, your riding style or maybe the terrain you're going to be riding in. For example, a lot of off-road and motocross riders, they like a little bit straighter handlebar, so a little less pullback or sweep. And that just helps them stay a little bit farther forward over the bike. I know woods and trail riders will actually cut down and narrow their handlebars just a little bit. But you got to remember, it's all about rider preference. Find a bend that you like and just try and stick to that specific bend. All right, so the last category that we're going to cover is going to be crossbar versus no crossbar. Now, all your 7 8 handlebars, they're going to have a crossbar for added strength. But when you get to your 1 and 1 8 you're going to notice that there's some that have a crossbar and some that do not. So the difference is going to be rigidity and how stiff the handlebar is. For riders that like a little bit stiffer feel, you would want to go with the crossbar. But for riders that like a little bit more flex and want to help absorb a little bit more vibration, well, you would go with a non-crossbar design. But also keep in mind that there are a lot of handlebars that we offer here at Rocky Mountain that are actually designed to help reduce vibration in rider fatigue. So make sure to check those out as well. And also when it comes down to crossbar versus non, a lot of times it's just what the rider thinks looks best. Some riders like the look of the crossbar pad, some riders like the look of it without, and hey, there ain't nothing wrong with that. But that's the last category is crossbar versus no crossbar. All right, guys, so there it is. That is our Handlebars 101. So thanks for watching this video. If you have any questions, you can comment below. Give us a call or chat live online. We will get your questions answered. And to pick up your next set of bars, it's real simple. You can click on the link or head over to RockyMountainATVMC.com. Remember, check out that Handlebar information page where we talk about everything we discussed today. We also show you the different manufacturers and the different bends that are available. Orders over $75 ship free. If you guys like this video and you want to see more like it, well, click and subscribe. I'm Chase of Rocky Mountain, and we'll see you on the trails.